a quick one to touch up on this because I thought this is absolutely hilarious. I'm sure most of you guys have seen this, but this is Salt Bay somehow managed to find his way on the pitch during Argentina's celebration of the World Cup. And he basically tried to clout chase and annoy Leon um, Messi as he's on the pitch there, you know, celebrating and kind of soaking in the moment. And everyone's kind of gone crazy about it on social media. But the funny thing with me when I saw this video is that it reminded me so much of scenarios I've seen in nightclubs where people have been trying to get the attention of a DJ, trying to go in a DJ booth, trying to go in a green room and just trying to be a part of the kind of inner circle of a DJ or whatnot. And it's always very cringe because I, you, I could never, as much as I love you know, nightlife, I love dance music, I'm a DJ myself, I could never sit here in good conscience and say a DJ is worth that level of annoyance and you know fanfaring as a football is as a footballer is i don't think so i don't think they're in the same sort of universe at all zero if anything i'm a very really big proponent in telling people especially on my own pod to leave djs alone if you're gonna go out and party go and party have a good time do loads of drugs drink a lot but you don't need to communicate with these djs most of them are flipping you know not the smartest or brightest people in the world some of them aren't really the greatest to hang out with and usually the best thing that they're put on this earth to do is to play really amazing sets and to craft and to, you know, provide a soundtrack to your night out. But they're not there as a weird kind of um, proxy to be your friend or something. It's not going to work that way. But I feel like with footballers, it's different because, you know, essentially sports is like a religion. Less so than maybe dance music or nightlife could be to some people. I think if you if you regard nightlife as a religion and stuff, you probably need to give yourself a little, a little bit of a hard look in the mirror. But I can kind of understand it with a footballer but I can't understand of a DJ, but it still looks extremely, extremely cringe when you see it happening with a footballer, especially when you, you know, when you kind of figure into it, Salt Bay's own level of celebrity and the fact that I'm sure he gets annoyed when people do this to, to him. Imagine him then doing it at Messi, especially during this moment where it's a kind of, you know, monumental, you know, moment for Messi in his career, monumental for Argentina overall. It's a World Cup, whatever it may be called. Why the fuck is Selpo in a pitch celebrating with them? But I felt the video was absolutely hilarious. So I'm going to play it now. If you guys are watching or listening via the audio podcast, essentially it's just the Argentina team on the pitch, all their friends and family and people associated with, I guess, with the Argentina FA, you know, basically basking in the glory of this World Cup and somehow Salt Bay, the Turkish legend, finds his way on there and tries to get the attention of Messi by tapping him on the shoulder and wanting to get a hug or hang out or have some sort of conversation about the game. I don't know, but it's really cringe. <laughs> <laughs> Salt Bay like taps Messi on the shoulder, tries to get his attention. Messi sees him, shakes his hand, and keeps walking. And Salt Bay keeps trying to grab him and trying to bring him into his embrace. Clearly, Messi's just not on that time. And there's nothing more embarrassing than those sort of occasions when you see somebody and you have one expectation of how that interaction is going to go. Because for sure, Salt Bay's last interaction with Messi was a fairly jubilant one, I'm assuming. Maybe Messi came to his restaurant, he force-fed him some fucking horrible meats, and his family were having a good time, they took lots of pictures. So in his head, he has this vision of Messi in his restaurant, smiling and, you know, holding, you know, hugging each other for a picture and stuff, and then him getting the assumption that they're friends. So when he sees them on the pictures, he's like, oh yeah, that's the Messi that I remember. Not knowing that Messi in his head thinking, this guy's a fucking prick, this guy's a fucking prick, this guy's a fucking prick. And when he sees him again, oh shit, it's that fucking prick. And he shakes his hand and keeps it moving. He doesn't take the hint because he's still in his head thinking, oh no, that's my friend. No, brother, he's not your friend. And the same thing goes for the people that try to clout chase DJs in venues or whatnot. Leave them alone. For the most part, leave them alone. If it's not a quick hi or a quick I love what you do, big fan of this EP, keep doing your thing leave them alone you don't need to give them any conversation they do not care about you especially if they're a top class dj or top tier sorry dj they're probably on their fourth set in that one day you know traveling between four countries in however many hours they're probably running on zero sleep a bag full of ketamine or something else and the last thing they want to do is have an interaction with you um you know in any kind of meaningful or, or surface level way just wave spud whatever it may be called blow kisses heart sign and keep it moving you don't need to do anything else zero 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 but i see people doing this all the time and it's kind of part of that whole sort of world if anything it kind of reminds you a little bit of that legend that guy that i saw 
um, in Fabric one time and I had a really interesting conversation with him in the green room and he's the guy that's always standing behind Ricardo Villalobos or sometimes he's around Sven Var. I remember reading in comments someone said that he might be Sven Var's brother or something. He's a dude that's got like a ponytail and he's just always around. I'm not sure if he's a manager or the booking agent but he's always just around lingering and um, he's always a person who's always kind of going out of his way to hug everybody and do this and pat people on the back and just make it known that he's part of the inner circle of the of people and i feel people like i feel like that's the, the thing that you see a lot in nightlife you see a lot of people doing that oftentimes trying to kind of subtly signal oh i know this person i know that person it's like no one cares just go and rave pay your ticket dance have a good time and go home at least for me anyway mostly when i'm going out i'm going out for my own self enjoyment which is a bit you know gay and a little bit lonely because I'm going out on my own for my own enjoyment. I should maybe be there with a crew or with a partner and stuff and having a good time. But whatever, I'm the way that I am. People are made differently. Some people like to have big groups of friends. I like to just be on my own and having a good time with a bag and a key and just raving and having a good little evening. But some people just want to signal subtly to everybody around them. Look, I know him. I know her. I know them. I know th whatever. It's like, stop it. Relax. Like, just chill out. And if you don't chill out, here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to get investigated. He's currently being investigated, which is funny because he, he's been investigated by FIFA. But if you believe the rumors um, online, the head of FIFA, which is Gianno Infantano, this absolute bald prick, he's the person who got Salt Bay on the pitch in the first place because him and Salt Bay have struck up some level of friendship because of the times he's visited his restaurants, you know, so often, which I don't really understand because Salt Bay restaurants, for the most part, have got terrible reviews. And from the videos that I've seen, the only thing he adds to it are the theatrics he does when he's cutting up the food and doing the whole Salt Bay sprinkle thing. But be, to be fair to the guy, he's really made this grift and this sort of a uh, scam um, last a very, very long time. Most people would have kind of, you know, their five minutes of fame, they would have gone by, but he's somehow been able to stretch this five minutes of fame for ages and ages and ages. It's not ended. It keeps on going. Here he is, you know what I mean? Like with Jonathan Fentan doing the whole salt based sprinkle thing, Jonathan Fentan trying to act like he's a cool guy and with the lads and whatnot. It's absolutely cringe. But luckily, the guy's getting investigated and hopefully we'll see the end of this super theatric. So this is courtesy of Sky Sports News. It says salt based World Cup final antics on the pitch being investigated by FIFA. Uh, FIFA is investigating the circumstances which led to Salt Bay gut crashing the Argentina World Cup celebrations in Qatar. The celebrity restaurant owner, whose real name is Nusret Gochi, or Go Goche, how do you pronounce that? Nusret Gochi, um, was seen on the pitch after the final trying to take selfies hard to see the players. No, he wasn't trying to, he did take them. He even got to hold the fucking World Cup, which you're not even meant to hold if you're a basic civilian. It's, a, it's sort of a privilege maybe somebody can give to you to hold it, but you're not meant to go out your way to try and grab it. You didn't play. Relax. If people were taking the piss out of Sergio Aguero for jumping on the pitch and celebrating with the team as if he played, how much more for flipping Salt Bay? What the hell is he doing on the pitch? FIFA has told Sky Sports his access to the pitch was unauthorised and its rules state that only World Cup winners and heads of state are allowed to touch the trophy during the closing ceremony. That doesn't even make any sense. Why are heads of states allowed to touch the World Cup? And why are World Cup winners, what previous ones, why are they even there on the pitch when a particular nation, when it's not their nation that they won it with prior, that's won it, like, or that's on the pitch? Like, well, that doesn't make any sense to me. But anyway, we continue. Look, this is him with the Angel Di Maria doing that annoying face that he does. Um, and it continues here. The spokesman for FIFA said, following a review, FIFA has been establishing how individuals gained undue access to the pitch after the closing ceremony at the Luce, Luce Sai Stadium on December 18th. The appropriate internal action will be taken. It is understood that Salt Bay has no involvement with FIFA president. Yes, he does. Look at this. Look at this cop out they're trying to do in, this, in the statement. It is understood that Salt Bay has no involvement with FIFA president Gianno Infantino who has previously been pictured visiting one of his restaurants. It's also believed that there is no commercial relationship between... Yes, there is. Yes, there is. He definitely got Gian Ventano on his fucking WhatsApp and said, hey, brother, can you sort me out? What's the motive? Link me. Do you know what I mean? Let's link and build. Let's do this thing. And he got invited. Let's not lie. Salt Bay was one of the Infantano's 303 Instagram followers at 6 p.m. on Thursday. But as of 7 p.m. on Thursday, he has been unfollowed. Ah! Oh! <laughs> Infantano trying to make it not bait. Yeah, right. The circus celebrity as chef has become known by his pseudonym Salt Bay since rising to fame on social media for his unique style of seasoning steaks. Um, now the host of a 
What's that? Now uh, a host of stars at his restaurant. Uh, sorry, now a host to the stars of res- at his restaurants. Salt-based presence among the celebrity anti the players caused a storm on social media, which the new world champions um, appearing to be apathetic to his involvement. <laughs> exactly. Come on, man. Messi was pictured trying to appear to get away from the celebrity chef Gabby Zama. Alessandro Martinez looked less than that to be pictured alongside him holding the World Cup trophy. A compilation video on, on Twitter of non plus players alongside Gokt racked up more than 50, 40 million views since it was posted on Monday afternoon. And I guess this is the video up here, right? Where he's clearly trying to make himself part of the flipping um, situation. <laughs> So I can't watch this. It's too cringe. It's too cringe. I can't. I can't. It's just too cringe. I cannot do it. Look at even the kid. Look at what's his name? Um, what's his name? Uh, Christian Romero's kid grabbing the trophy. That's saying, "No, that's my dad's. What are you doing? Give it back here." Look, even the even the baby knows Salt Bay is a fucking weapon. Like, give it back here, you little short cunt. I know I'm short, but you're shorter. Give it back here. Absolute disgrace. Absolute disgrace. But yeah, glad that FIFA are investigating him. It's funny that his own friends investigating him for allowing him access on the pitch and then tried to unfollow him to kind of cover his tracks. But it's too late, Gianno Infantino, you bald prick. Hopefully he gets sort of been, um, exposed very, very soon because that guy is obviously one of the most annoying people that's ever existed, especially when it comes to FIFA. We replaced Set Blatter with him before corruption's ended, but it just keeps on keeping on. <laughs> 